This is Lesson 18 in our Calculus 1 series, Relative Extrema. Recall that in Lesson 16 we saw the following definitions for relative extrema. A function f has a relative maximum or local maximum at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval containing x equals c. And similarly, f has a relative minimum or local minimum at x equals c if f of c is less or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval containing x equals c. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to find relative extrema. Let's first take a look at a couple more definitions. f is increasing on an interval a, b if x2 greater than x1 implies that f of x2 will be greater than f of x1 for all x1 and x2 in the interval. So if we're saying x2 is a greater x value than x1, f of x2 is greater than f of x1, if this is true for all points x1 and x2 in this interval. So what we're saying here is that the y values increase as the x values increase. Similarly, we can say that f is decreasing on a, b if x2 greater than x1 implies f of x2 is less than f of x1. So as the x values increase, the y values are decreasing. So for example, this graph here is increasing on negative infinity to negative 1, union 2 to infinity, those are the x intervals on which the graph is increasing, and f is decreasing on negative 1 to 2. Again, that's the x interval on which the graph is decreasing. Now, we've been talking about derivatives and slopes for a while now, and we can see that when the slope is positive, the function is increasing. When the slope is negative, the function is decreasing. So if f prime of x is greater than 0 on an interval, f is increasing on that interval. If f prime of x is less than 0 on an interval, f is decreasing on that interval. So the sign of f prime will help us find intervals of increase and decrease of f, and that's going to help us find relative extrema, relative maximums and relative minimums. Now, if we're going to be looking for intervals on which f prime is positive and negative, we're going to need to find the points at which f prime is equal to zero and the points at which f prime doesn't exist. Because at those points, f prime can change from positive to negative or negative to positive. So those are our critical points and those are going to be important for us here as well. So let's recall that definition from lesson 16. x equals c is a critical number of f if f prime of c is equal to zero or f prime of c does not exist. And keep in mind that c must be in the domain of f to be a critical number. And then we call the point c comma f of c a critical point of f. So to find the intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing and to find relative extrema, we're going to start by finding any discontinuities of f. So we're going to check the domain of the function. And usually what we might see are asymptotes here. We're going to find f prime, find the critical numbers, then plot the critical numbers and any discontinuities on a number line and on the intervals of that number line, we're going to test the sign of f prime. And if f prime goes from negative to positive at the critical number x equals c, f has a relative minimum at x equals c. This is saying f is decreasing and then increasing. That'll give us a relative minimum. If f prime goes from positive to negative at the critical number x equals c, then f is increasing to decreasing. So f has a relative maximum at x equals c. And this, step six, is called the first derivative test for relative extrema. So let's take a look at this example. f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x four squared minus 1. Step one says find any discontinuities of f by checking the domain. This is a polynomial, so its domain is all reals. We have no discontinuities. Step two is to take the derivative, so we have 4x to the third minus 8x. 
Now we want to find our critical points, and we note that this derivative always exists, so there are no points for which f prime does not exist. So we set f prime equal to zero and solve for x. So we factor out a 4x, and the remaining factor is x squared minus 2. So we set these both equal to zero. That gives us x equals zero and x equals positive or negative radical 2. Now we're up to step four. Plot the critical numbers and any discontinuities on a number line. So let's take our critical numbers and let's set up a number line. And now we want to test the sign of f prime on each of these intervals. So we're going to take one number in each interval and plug it into f prime. For our interval on the left, we want a number that is less than negative radical 2. Well, I know that negative radical 4 is less than negative radical 2, and so that would be x equals negative 2. And so what is f prime of negative 2? Well, f prime of x is 4x to the third minus 8x. Actually, I find it easier to use the factored form of f prime for these evaluations, so I'm going to use 4x times x squared minus 2. And so here we have a negative number. And here we have 4 minus 2, so that's a positive number, and this is negative. I don't really care what the number is, I just want to test the sign. And we found out that that's negative, so I'm going to put a negative sign above the interval here. In this interval, we know that negative radical 1 is greater than negative radical 2 and less than 0. So that's negative 1, so x equals negative 1 can be our test point here. So f prime of negative 1 is going to be 4 times negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 squared minus 2. Again, this factor is negative, but now here we have 1 minus 2. This is also negative, so this becomes a positive product. Here we have x equals positive 1. So we're going to have 4 times 1 multiplied by 1 squared minus 2. So that's going to be positive, and this is going to be negative, so this is a negative product. And we have a negative sign here. And then here, we can use x equals 2. So f prime of 2 is 4 times 2 multiplied by 2 squared minus 2. This is positive, this is positive, it's all positive. And so what does this tell us now about f? We have f prime is negative, positive, negative, positive. That tells us that f is decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing, and then increasing. Decreasing, then increasing is going to give us a minimum at this critical point. Increasing and then decreasing is going to give us a maximum at this critical point. Decreasing then increasing gives us another minimum at this critical point. So f has relative minimums at x equals positive or negative radical 2. And f has a relative maximum at x equals 0. Now it would be good to also have the y coordinates that go along with these x coordinates. So let's plug these x values into the original to get the corresponding y values. Here's the original. f of positive or negative radical 2, they'll be the same because we only have even powers here, right? So this negative sign would square out anyway. So that's going to be a radical 2 to the fourth, so that's going to be 4 minus 4 times radical 2 squared, so that'll be 2 minus 1. So it's 4 minus 9, and that is negative 5. And f of 0 is going to be negative 1. So we have positive negative radical 2 comma negative 5. And 0 comma negative 1. And the graph looks like this. Here is our relative maximum. Here are our two relative minimums. And often we are asked to identify the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing, so we should do that as well. f is increasing on 
the interval from x equals negative radical 2 to 0, and also from radical 2 to infinity. f is decreasing on negative infinity to negative radical 2, and then 0 to radical 2. And remember that we always use x values when we're describing intervals for a function. So these are intervals on x. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at f of x equals x to the third. We are familiar with this graph already, and we know that this is an increasing function. We know that it's increasing on the entire real line, so from negative infinity to infinity. But let's see what happens when we examine this using calculus to find intervals of increase and decrease and relative extrema. We find the derivative to be 3x squared. Finding critical points means setting this equal to 0. So we do that and we get x is equal to 0 as our only critical number. So we put that on a number line and then we test x values on either side into f prime to find the sign of f prime. Now notice f prime is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. So if we take, for example, x equals negative 1, we're going to have 3 times negative 1 quantity squared. That's going to be positive. And here, x equals 1, f prime is going to be positive there as well. So here we have f prime being positive for x less than 0. It's equal to 0 at x equals 0 and then it's positive again when x is greater than zero. So we have a positive slope, a zero slope, and then a positive slope again. So here we have no relative extrema. There's no change in sign across any critical numbers. And f is increasing here on the entire real line. Let's take a look at another example. f of x equals x squared over x plus one find the intervals on which f is increasing and decreasing, and find any relative extrema. Well, again, step one says we should check the domain and look for any discontinuities. Here, we see that x cannot equal negative one because that would make the denominator equal to zero. And we should see what kind of discontinuity that is. And so when x is equal to negative one, notice that we get non-zero over zero. We get negative one quantity squared over zero. And so that tells us we're gonna have an asymptote for this graph at x equals negative one. So we need to keep that in mind and plot this x equals negative one on our number line when we test the sign of f prime. Now let's find critical numbers by finding f prime. Here we use the quotient rule, bottom times derivative of the top, minus top times derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. So that's 2x squared plus 2x minus x squared. So we have x squared plus 2x up on top, x plus 1 quantity squared on the bottom. And notice this doesn't exist at the same x equals negative 1 for which the function doesn't exist. And that's the only x value for which it doesn't exist. So let's set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Setting a fraction equal to 0 means the numerator is equal to 0, so we have x squared plus 2x equal to 0. Factoring and solving gives us x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. So these are our critical numbers. And I'm just going to write down what we said about f prime not existing. f prime of negative 1 does not exist, but x equals negative 1 is an asymptote of f not a critical number. Remember that a critical number needs to be in the domain of the function. So now we have x equals 0, x equals negative 2 as critical numbers, and we have an asymptote at x equals negative 1. So those are the three values we want to put on our number line. Now before we start plugging in numbers to test the sign of f prime on each interval, I want to make note that at x equals negative 1, we have an asymptote, not a critical number. So I want to put a dotted line here, the same as I would for an asymptote on the graph, just to remind myself that this is an asymptote. Because what happens is, if I have, say, a plus here and a minus here, and I don't remember that it's an asymptote, I might think, oh, I have a relative maximum at x equals negative 1 when in fact we don't. So it's important to denote this on our number line. Now I'm ready to start plugging in numbers. Here we can plug in x equals negative 3. 
and I want to write down a factored version of f prime that's going to be convenient for finding the sign here. So f prime of x is equal to x times x plus 2 over x plus 1 quantity squared. And notice this denominator is always positive. So let's take a look at f prime of negative 3. That's going to be negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2 over something positive. So that's negative times negative over positive, and that's positive. Here, we can take a look at x equals negative 1.5. f prime of negative 1.5 is going to be negative 1.5 times negative 1.5 plus 2 over something positive. So that's going to be negative times positive over positive, and that's negative. Here we can use x equals negative 0 0.5. So f prime of negative 0 0.5 is equal to negative 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5 plus 2 over something positive. So that's a negative times a positive over a positive, that's also negative. And then f prime of, say, x equals 1 is 1 times 1 plus 2 over something positive, so this is all positive. Now, what does this say about f? This says that f is increasing, then decreasing, then we have an asymptote, then it's decreasing and then increasing. So increasing to decreasing tells us that we have a maximum at x equals negative 2. And decreasing to increasing tells us we have a minimum at x equals 0. So we have a relative max at x equals negative 2 and a relative min at x equals 0. We also want to write down the intervals of increase and decrease for f. So we have that f is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, and from 0 to infinity. And f is decreasing on negative 2 to negative 1, and negative 1 to 0. Keep in mind that we have to exclude x equals negative 1 from our set here because f does not exist at x equals negative 1. There's an asymptote there. So we found our intervals of increase and decrease. Now the only thing left that we could do is perhaps find the y-coordinates to go with the relative extrema, so let's do that. At x equals negative 2, f of negative 2 is negative 2 squared over negative 2 plus 1. So that's 4 over negative 1, negative 4. And f of 0 is equal to 0. So we have negative 2 comma negative 4 and 0, 0. And the graph of this function looks like this. We have negative 2 comma negative 4 and 0, 0. And we have our asymptote here at x equals negative 1. Now let's take a look at another. f of x equals x plus radical 1 minus x. Use the first derivative test to find all local extrema. Okay, so this is exactly the same thing that we've been doing. We want to first check the domain of f of x to see if we have any discontinuities. Also, because we have this square root, we know that we're going to have a domain that is restricted, and we should pay attention to what that domain is. So our domain here is that 1 minus x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So that says x must be less or equal to 1. This is our domain here. So we don't have any discontinuities, but we do have a restricted domain. Now we want to find f prime f prime is going to be 1 plus, this 1 half comes down, 1 half, 1 minus x to the negative 1 half multiplied by negative 1, using the chain rule. So we want to simplify this by writing without a negative exponent, so we're here. And the first thing we notice is that this does not exist when x is equal to 1. Remember that x equals 1 is in our domain 
but it cannot be plugged into the derivative. So x equals 1 is a critical number. Now we want to set f prime equal to 0 to see if we have any other critical numbers. So we set this equal to 0, and we want to bring this term over to the right-hand side so that we can cross-multiply and get this radical out of the denominator. So we have 2 times radical 1 minus x is equal to 1, radical 1 minus x is equal to 1 half, and now we square both sides to get rid of the radical, and then we want to solve for x. So we're going to add x to one side and subtract 1 fourth to the other. And so we have x is equal to 3 fourths, and we just want to make sure that this is, in fact, in our domain. And our domain is x is less or equal to 1, so yes, this is in our domain. And this is a critical number. So we have two critical numbers. We have x equals 3 quarters and x equals 1 as our critical numbers. So those are going to go on our number line, but also keep in mind that we have a restricted domain. So our number line is not going to have arrows in both directions as a line of all real numbers. We're going to start with x less or equal to 1. So here I have an arrow going that way, but here I have an endpoint on my number line that's x equals 1. And then we'll put x equals 3 fourths here. So now we want to test the intervals to find the sine of f prime. We need something less than 3 fourths. We can use, say, x equals 0. Now let's get f prime. So now f prime of 0 is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 radical 1. So 1 minus 1 half, and that's 1 half and that's positive. Now to test this interval, we want to be a little bit crafty here, because notice that whatever x value we have here, we need to subtract from 1 and then take the square root and compare this quantity to 1 to see if this whole thing will be positive or negative. So instead of just picking any number you can think of, let's think about using something that has maybe a denominator of, say, 16, so that we can take a square root nicely. For example, if we choose x equals 15 over 16, we know that's bigger than 3 fourths because this is 9 sixteenths. And then when we subtract 1 minus 15 sixteenths, we'll get a 1 sixteenth, which goes under the square root very nicely. So let's choose 15 sixteenths for this interval. And so we have f prime of 15 sixteenths and that's 1 minus 1 over 2 radical 1 minus 15 sixteenths. So 1 minus 1 over 2 radical 1 sixteenth, 1 minus 1 over 2 times 1 fourth. So this is 1 minus, this is 2 fourths, which is 1 half. Flip that, that's a 2. So this is a negative 1, and so this interval has f prime negative. So what does this say about f? It says that f is increasing and then decreasing, which means we have a relative maximum at x equals 3 fourths. And what's the corresponding y value to go with that? f of 3 fourths is equal to 3 fourths plus radical 1 minus 3 fourths. So that's 3 fourths plus radical, this is 1 fourth here. So 3 fourths plus 1 half. And so that's 5 fourths. And so we could say this relative maximum occurs at the point 3 fourths comma 5 fourths. We can also say f is increasing for x strictly less than 3 fourths and f decreasing for x between 3 fourths and 1. So f is increasing on negative infinity to 3 fourths, and f is decreasing on 3 fourths to 1. Keep in mind that we often talk about open intervals of increase and decrease, so I'm not going to worry about this endpoint of our domain at x equals 1. We'll stick to open intervals here and say f is decreasing on 3 fourths comma 1. And so this graph looks like this. Here we have our relative max at 3 fourths comma 5 fourths. 
And here, f prime of 1 does not exist. We have vertical tangency here. We have infinite slope. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to use f double prime to find information about the graph of f. And in the following lesson, we'll put it all together and do some curve sketching. So this is the end of the lesson for relative extrema, but you'll certainly see this again when it all comes together for curve sketching in lesson 20. And this concludes lesson 18, relative extrema.